I think the fate of utopian thought and again the, the general assumption that, that ideas themselves seem to lead to violence, seem to lead to, to mass murder, is not uh, an accurate uh, conclusion. One can't live without ideas. One, even, even, even small ideas, ideas about what you know, the next step shall be, what kind of medical care, what kind of national uh, medical system. Um, it seems to me it's, it's a version of anti-intellectualism to say that ideas themselves lead to violence. Uh, I don't see the record anywhere justifying this. I mean, if anything, it's, it's, it's blood feuds. It's, 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 it's an ethos of nationalism, of religious loyalties. But uh, the utopian ideas themselves, uh, I don't see it. And, and, and look at the utopians. I mean, generally, the ones, I mean, from Thomas More uh, to, to Bellamy, these were not violent men. Uh, they, were, they were gentle people. I am concerned about defending a utopian vision, even, I say, even in the midst of a somewhat bleak look at the present. I am concerned that intellectuals in general uh, perhaps have advocated that responsibility. A responsibility might be the term. Uh, it was probably 40 years, more than 40, Noam Chomsky writes an essay called The Responsibility of Intellectuals. Uh, and that essay itself looked back to Dwight McDonald's uh, discussion of the responsibility of intellectuals. Um, and I see it as part of, uh, maybe more than an irony, perhaps part of the self-defeat of intellectuals, that they no longer take on this mission of uh, the responsibility uh, that too many of us have become quiet academics, quiet professionals, um, and have not only politically, but intellectually advocated 